Hey Altitude University, my name is Ryan. I am a commercial pilot and flight instructor. And today we're gonna to go over some questions that you're gonna see on your part 107 knowledge test. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about an example or kind of a run through of how you'd go about taking this test using the testing supplement. So today that's what we're gonna do. Uh, um, today we're gonna to focus on just 10 questions on airspace and reading of the chart supplement. Uh, if this is something that you find helpful and it is successful, we can definitely do more down the line. So let's get started. So when you sit down for your knowledge test, they're going to give you a testing supplement, which is the what I have here. It's going to be a book about 100 pages of just all images that is used to reference uh, some of the questions that you're going to have on your exam. In the top right corner, there's going to be a code. You want to make sure you match that code with the images that they're referencing. Uh, today, I have the H version, which is like the newest one. Uh, the questions that I'm using are from the previous version. But don't worry, I double check that this will all make sense today and that will the images um, still work. But for your exam, please double check that the code is correct because some testing centers could still have an outdated book but the new exam. So the first question, what does the line of latitude at Area 4 measure? So it says refer to figure 26. The way this book is laid out, and so you go to the appendix to show you guys. Scroll. There's legends and then there's figures. They go in order. They start with the legends and then go to figures. Uh, we're going to go to figure 26. Uh, I put that on page 59, so I'm going to cheat just because I'm on my computer. But when you flip through, they go in order, so it makes sense. Figure 26. So this is asking about the what does the line of latitude at area 4 measure? So at area four, so regardless of if it's area or not, let's first talk about what latitude measures. So latitude, think about laterally with the Earth's surface. So it goes around the Earth. Uh, latitude lines are parallel to the equator. So when you're at the equator, it is zero. When you go north uh, and you go up to nine degrees north, that is the North Pole. And you go nine degrees south, that is the South Pole. And then there's everything in between. With these latitude lines, they are depicted on the chart, uh, like I said, parallel to the equator, so they go east to west, and they're written every 30 minutes. So when I say minutes, I don't mean minutes as in time, I mean minutes as in coordinates. So with each degree, that is 60 minutes, so every 30 minutes they have a line. So this is 47 degrees north. If I continue up here, the next would be 47 and 30 minutes north. Um, so area four, let's go back to our question. Oops. There we go. Uh, what does the line of latitude area four measure? The degree of latitude north and south of the equator is your answer. Uh, A talks about the prime meridian line. That is used for the uh, longitude lines. So longitude lines is what is based off of the prime meridian line prime meridian line, excuse me, and then that line goes through Greenwich, England, which C talks about that line as well. So A and C are the same, essentially the same answer. Uh, your correct answer is B, because we are using the equator for latitude. All right. All right, so another question we have is, what airport is located approximately 47 degrees and 40 minutes north uh, latitude and 101 degrees and 26 minutes west longitude. So first we're going to go to the figure 21. I'm going to slide over. I'm at 26, so 25, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, so we're in figure 25. Sorry, figure 21, and it said 47 degrees and 40 minutes north. We'll start with that one first. So we're 47. What I see here, let me zoom in to make life easier. I see the 48 right here. And remember how I said that the lines are depicted every 30 minutes. So if I go south, close to the equator, the number gets less. So this is going to be 47 and 30 minutes. Now, how do we determine where 10 is? So each of these dashes, let me zoom in a little bit more. Each of these dashes is going to be 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So the 10 is going to be a big uh, line or big compared to the other ones. And then the five actually, every five, 
me zoom in here on this one because it's easy to see, is going to be slightly uh, larger than just the one, and then you see how the 10 is the largest. So it goes small, medium to large to help you count every 5 and 10. So we go 30, the first notch here is 40, and that's 47 and 40, so it's going to be along here. Let's see if I can draw. There we go. So we're going to come along like here, just for a nice visual for you guys. And then it says 101 degrees and 26 minutes west. So we have 101 degrees, which is right here. And remember, since we are going west, we are going further from the prime meridian line. So we're going to go this way, just like how with the Latitude lines are every 30 minutes. The longitude lines are the same way. So right here would be 101 degrees and 30 minutes. So it said 26. So we're going to go back for 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is going to lead us right here. So if I draw my cursor, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's just about right here. So right here is where we want. And this is going to be that airport right there. So Garson Airport is our answer. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's see. What is the floor of the Savannah Class Charlie airspace at the shelf area, the outer circle? So we're gonna to go to figure 23. Oops, zoomed out way too much. I'm going to go out here. I know figure 23 is on page 56. I'm going to go right here. Let me zoom in. So with the class Charlie, remember, there are usually two shelves. And I see usually there are some exceptions. But for the most part, there's always going to be two shelves with the class Charlie. The inner circle is going to be closest, that is closest to the airport, is always going to go to the surface. The outer circle is going to be a little bit higher. Think about it. The point of this airspace is to kind of really control the airplanes around that are going in and out of that airport. When they're further from the airport, they're going to be higher up. So they don't really need it at the surface when they're 10 miles out. But they do need it at the surface when they're 5 miles out, just for that extra safety. So we look at this outer circle. We see that 41 over 13. That means it goes up to 4,100 feet and then down to 1,300 feet. Now this is all MSL. Altitudes that are depicted for airspace are always going to be MSL in this case. So what we have, 1,300 feet MSL. The other answer is 13 AGL. Like I said, when we're looking at the class Charlie airspace, it's always going to be in MSL. Uh, that's because planes use MSL. We don't really use AGL when we're flying because uh, that's a lot of math that we don't want to do. So our engine, or sorry, instrument gauges are always going to read uh, MSL, means above sea level. All right, we'll go to the next question. What chart shows a gray line with VR1667, VR1617, VR1638, and 1668? Could this area present a hazard to the operations of a small UA? So let's go to figure 59. I don't know if figure 59 is page 90. So I'm going to go all the way down. All right. So we have figure 59, and I'm going to look for. Let's see, it says area two. So I'm going to go around area two, which is what I have over here. And let's zoom in. Let's see if we can show you guys a little bit better. All right. When we have these VR um, with this gray line, that's going to be a military route. When those are those four digits like this, that's going to tell me that they are doing military or they're clear to do military activity at or below 1,500. Uh, this means they're probably traveling very fast at a high velocity, which is why it's designated at this area. The speed restrictions for aircrafts are 250 uh, knots below a certain altitude. So since we are really low here, 
uh, they have to depict that, that they're probably moving very fast. So that's going to be a pretty big danger if a giant plane hits your uh, drone at over 250 knots. That would be a pretty bad day. So the uh, answer here, yes, this is a military training route for the surface to 1,500 feet. All right. Next question, you have been hired by a farmer to use your small UA to inspect his crops. The area that you are to survey is the Devil's Lake West MOA, east of Area 2. How would you find out if the MOA is active? So we're going to go to Figure 21. So I'm going to go back here. Figure 21 is page 54. So we have the Devil's Lake MOA. So with an MOA, they're always depicted with this magenta uh, dashed and solid line, and it's always going to say the name of it on the inside. This is on your sectional chart, and on the side of the sectional chart is going to be more of a detailed description of the altitude of that MOA, of the controlling agency, and a phone number, or a frequency to contact that controlling agency on to determine if it's hot or cold. If it's hot, it means it's active. If it is cold, it means it's inactive and you are able to, uh, to go through that. So when we look here, it says refer to the chart legend because that's the information that it's going to have on the side of who you can contact. There is, they aren't always active, so they're not always going to be depicted as it's always hot or always cold. So that's why they're just going to give you the controlling agency to talk to them on. All right, how would a remote pilot or sorry, a remote PIC check notums as noted in the caution box regarding the unmarked balloon. So we're going to go to figure 20. And just one up. So this is area five. I look by area five. It says caution unmarked balloon on cable to 38 or sorry, 3,008 feet MSL check NOTAMs. So when you check NOTAMs, uh, NOTAMs are a notice to airmen. Uh, they come out sir, for something that isn't always published. To say, hey, this is going to happen in this area at this time. Um, be aware. A way to check those is a couple of different ways. Uh, the best way, which I would recommend, which is also the answer, is obtaining a weather briefing. So you can go to 1-800-WXBrief.com. That's also a phone number. It's the same service. You can call them or you can go online and you can do a NOTAM search and look up for your area of the, where you're going to fly. And it's going to bring the list of the active NOTAMs, the ones that are coming up, so you can have a, a nice description of everything. Um, I like calling them just because it has a person tell me exactly what I, what I need to know. Uh, but another way, the wxbrief.com uh, is so you can see them and maybe print it out so you, you, won't, uh, you won't forget them. All right. While monitoring the Cooperstown CTAF, you hear an aircraft announce that they are midfield left downwind runway 13. Where would the aircraft be relative to the runway? So we're going to go to figure 26 in area 2. Let me zoom out here. We'll go to 26, which is 59. All right, and we're going to go to area two, so Cooperstown. So first, when they say runway one three, that means the direction of which the runway is facing if you are standing looking down that runway. So for example, let me get my handy dandy drawing cursor up here. So runway one three, they're taking off to the direction of 130 degrees. So they're taking off in this direction. Now they said they're making a uh, left downwind. So when you're doing a left downwind or left traffic, you are turning left. So left for your crosswind. Now we have our downwind leg. Now we have our base leg. And now we have final. So again, we have our upwind leg or departure end leg. We have our crosswind. We have downwind. We have base. And then lastly, we have final. So in this question, it said they were midfield left to downwind. So that tells me they're right here landing for runway 13, meaning they're going to come around and land right here. 
So that means the aircraft is east because we are on this side of the area. So the aircraft is east of that airport. If the aircraft was making right traffic, then they could be west or even southwest in this area. But the answer here is the aircraft is east. All right, um, at, you know, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this airport. Uh, which frequency should be used as the common traffic advisory frequency, or the known as CTAF, to monitor the airport traffic? So we're going to go to figure 22. Zoom out here. Figure 22, which I have on page 55. So when I zoom in at this airport, a little bit more, there we are. So on the sectional, it always gives you the name. Uh, it says AWOS. This is where how, how the pilots get the weather. So the AWOS frequency of the weather is going to be on 135.075. This is going to be the altitude of which the airport lies, so the 2320. That L means there's lights at that airport with that asterisk, so it's pilot controlled lighting. The 74 is 7,400 feet, which is the longest runway. And what you're looking for is the 122.8 with a C. So whenever that C is in there, that means it is the CTAF frequency. Um, it's always going to have the frequency and then the letter C. Some airports will have multiple frequencies. Make sure you use the CTAF frequency uh, that is just prior to that C that is kind of bolded with the, uh, with the magenta circle. So 122.8 is your answer. Let's see if I'm right. There, that's an option there. Beautiful. So 122.8 is your CTAF frequency designated as that bold C. All right, you have been hired to inspect the tower under construction at 46.9 north and 98.6 west near Jamison, or sorry, Jamestown Regional. Uh, what? must you receive prior to flying your unmanned aircraft in this area. So I'm going to go to figure 26 at area 4. So I'm looking at figure 26 at area 4. So if I'm flying around an airport, the controlling agency, whether it's any airspace, is always going to be ATC. So when we talk about airspace, there's this authorization from ATC. Even if it is a military area, there is a controlling agency, which is ATC, that is controlling that airspace. So you always want to contact ATC no matter where you are flying. If you're flying over a park and there is our national park or a marine sanctuary, there's going to be def there's definitely like more rules to fly over, whether it's altitude-wise or noise abatement procedures. Um, but ATC is always going to be the controlling agency, air traffic control. They do all the airspace in the United States. So B. And then we have what ATC authorization, or sorry, with ATC authorization, you are operating your small unmanned aircraft approximately four south, or sorry, bleh, let me restart this one. With ATC authorization, you are operating your small unmanned aircraft approximately four statute miles southeast of Elizabeth City Regional Airport. What hazard is indicated to be in that area? So I'm going to go to figure 20. Okay, zoom out here. And figure 20, which is page 53. Okay. And they said we are looking at the Elizabeth City Airport, just about four southeast, so I'm going east and south, which is going to be in this general area. And then I have this line, let me follow this line out here, it says caution, unmarked balloon, on cable to 3,008 feet MSL check notums. So I'm going to go back to the question, what hazard is indicated? It's an unmarked balloon, you copy and paste whatever you see on that chart to your answer right here, as it says unmarked balloon on a cable up to 3,008 feet MSL. Be careful, it's always, M or in this case, it's depicted as MSL, so make sure you have that there as MSL, not AGL. Um, so a little tricky there. 
All right, and that concludes the 10 questions that we're going over today. Again, if you found this helpful, you find a better way that you are more uh, a different topic, please let us know, and we'll be able to get that done for you. You guys enjoy.